Well, hello there. I've been living in this seven meter long sprinter van for the last two months. And I've been getting some questions about the van. So I thought I would make this short video about everything that is going on in this. And we're gonna start the tour in the living spaces that are in the middle of the van. So come closer and uh, I'll show you around. So let's get on board. Of course, first we take off our shoes. And here's the general area where I, of course, spend most of my time. So now I have uh, all these windows boarded up because it's sunny and the daytime, so they keep the heat out. And here's where I cook all my meals. There's some storage, fridge, all this stuff. So let's get into the video and I'll show you a little bit in depth each function of this van and how I use it in my day-to-day -day life here in this sunny Bulgaria. As I'm definitely the worst cook that you can ever meet, <laughs> I usually just make some basic meals like meat, pasta, rice on these alcohol cookers that I have on this tabletop. I like these cookers because they don't require any gas bottles to be filled later on. So you just put in the right fuel and you can just keep on cooking. I don't necessarily want to use the fuel burners every day. So I also have a microwave in the car, which I can use to heat up yesterday's food. And that's a nice creature comfort from your regular house. And of course, the most important appliance is the fridge, because I always have to have cold beer with me. <laughs> I also have a working sink and drinkable tap water directly in the van, so it makes life so much more easy. I have two water tanks underneath the sink, one being clean water and one being dirty water. Usually one full tank will give me about a week, and it's good to empty the dirty water at the same time, so it doesn't start to stink. All the lights in this van are LED lights. The spotlights you see on the roof are touch sensitive, so you don't have to come off the bed, for example, if you have a light on in the nighttime or in the morning. And the main light in the living space is these two LED strips going all across the living area. Even though those LED strips are pretty nice, I do feel sometimes my workspace needs a little bit more light, so I have this spot on top of it. And it does help a lot if you need to fix a motorcycle part or something on the table. The bed is a pull-out system that extends to a size of 210 centimeters long and 165 centimeters wide. I also have an 80 centimeter mattress topper on top of the base to make the sleeping extra comfortable. So the bed is pretty spacious actually, and you can quite easily fit two people in this one. The extended part of the bed is suspended with these two seat belt buckles that are very easy and fast to attach. So it takes me like uh, less than a minute to put this bed up and then put it back down in the morning. I like it and it's very comfortable. Even go as far as to say that it's just as comfortable as the normal bed I'm used to in my house. I make the bed secure during rides using these two big bolts so it won't move if there's a hard braking situation or some kind of an accident. Here's the spot where I work. The ergonomy is not perfect, but I feel comfy just sitting there for long enough to get these things done, like the script for this video. <laughs> and at evening, this is a nice spot to relax and watch YouTube videos from a laptop. I don't have a TV here, so. I've installed a turning mechanism under the passenger seat that I get a bit more open space, and it's nicer to sit there when someone is visiting. Also, the turn seat is comfortable place to sit and do some reading or just relax and watch videos. Without this turning seat, sitting with a friend in this van would be kind of uncomfortable, so I think this is a very good setup. If you like this content and you want to support my channel, please subscribe and press the like button on this video. It helps a lot and thank you for watching. Now back to the video. I try to be very organized as it's annoying when you can't find the stuff you're looking for. I keep most of my food items in these upper cabinets. Some of these open shelves makes life a lot more easy because you can just see where the stuff is. You can never have too much space in a van like this. Some stuff that I don't need as often, I usually just keep in the back of the van. 
The first box under the seat is for my clothing and the second one is hardly organized. It's full of all kinds of crap, but mostly my electronics and cables and stuff like that. The powerful diesel heater is operated directly from the cabin and the van is so well insulated that it's livable even in the harsh Finnish winter. I also have three big solar panels in the roof and huge batteries in the trunk that are easily sufficient to sustain myself without even plugging the car into any outlets. Even when the weather is a bit cloudy, my charge levels are pretty good. If I do, however, decide to plug the car in directly, all the electronics will automatically switch and it's gonna charge all the batteries in the car, the driving battery and the batteries in the trunk. I also have this 4G box in the car. It's very nice because you have Wi-Fi wherever you go. But maybe that's enough rambling. You wanna see the trunk? Yes! Let's go. Last but not least, the garage is of course my favorite part of this van. I know it's not the prettiest, but it works. Here I can keep all the stuff that doesn't fit in the living area, like more of these plastic storage boxes. I carry my own pressure washer as well. I do have this plastic fantastic toilet with me. I've never had to use it so far, but it's nice to have just in case. Even the van tires need air, so why not? What's nice about traveling with the van instead of the bike is that I can have a lot of tools with me. All survival kits should have a hoover, and of course I have one too charging in the back of the van. And again with the open shelves in the back as well. I love the fact that I can just put some smaller knickknacks up there. I also have this foldable seat in the back. It's nice to have, but I don't really use it much. Getting the bike in, I of course have to have this aluminum ramp with me. I carry a couple of helmets in these helmet mounts. And of course I carry a lot of my riding gear with me. And sometimes they're wet and dirty and muddy, so I don't want to hang them in the living area. So this is a nice place for them to just dry up. I have this huge 150 liter water tank in the back that can be used as a shower or just to wash the bike. And of course I have some lighting in the back as well. There's also this nice clothing rack in the back where I can dry my clothes after I get them washed so they don't take any space in the living area. Loading the bike is quite easy once you get used to balancing. It could be a little bit easier with an electric winch, but I don't feel the need for it anymore. With this red Enduro bike mount in the center of the floor, the bike doesn't even need any straps to hold it in place. The bike needs to be centered in the mount for it to work properly. After the bike is in the right place, there's this ratchet mechanism in the stand that just comes down to the footbacks, and then you just double lock it with the pin below. I do sometimes put some straps just in case if I'm traveling some longer distances or some places where I expect some potholes, for example. So compared to the traditional straps, I much prefer this setup because I, it's much easier to use alone when you're loading up the bike. And you can use it with the Tenere or any other bigger bike as well. And of course, if you are with the big bike, you need to put the straps on to double check that it's gonna stay secure. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Because I tried to keep this very short, I'm sure I forgot something. Thank you for watching the whole video and see you on the next ones. Bye.